I have, I've got one of my sons in the gospel, my spiritual son. He is going to be speaking today, bringing the word. We're still in the series of monsters. We're in October, y'all. And I'm just here to tell you, let me just echo this loud and clear. Y'all ain't got to be scared. Tell somebody, say, don't be scared. Okay? Don't be scared. Amen? So the wonderful thing about the good news of the Bible is, is the more that we get into it, the more our faith in our spirit grows and roars like a brave lion that we are called to be because we stand in him. Amen? Y'all, we've got miracles in this house. We have got miracles in this place. I mean, praise God. This woman, when she first came in here, bless her. She's got the sweetest spirit. But she walked in here, and she couldn't move very fast. She was on a walker, and she's had a stroke. Is that correct? Was it a stroke? This beautiful woman of God connected her faith. Look, those of you who are watching online, we love you so much, and we're so glad that you are tuning in because I know God's got an on-time word for you. But let me just say this really loud and clear. When you get into the house and there's this synergy, this energy that is built up in faith, in faith, it creates such a strong atmosphere that is conducive to things like that happening. It's miracles. It's miracles because your faith gets built and she walked in here and I want you to look her hand that was paralyzed. She has got both hands up in the air. She is worshiping. She is clapping. She walked in without a cane. Y'all, that's the God you serve. That's the God I serve. That's the God we serve. I want you to just testify to somebody right now. Tell them nothing. Shout it. Do you believe it? Shout nothing. Ain't nothing too hard for our God. Amen. So all this little penny any crap y'all been through. Y'all excuse me. I said crap again. Y'all get used to it. I preach with some words like that. But so if you're offended, just wash your ears out real good and let's keep going. But this little stuff that y'all get so tripped up over and you get depressed over, that is so silly. Did you get up this morning and tell the sun to wake up? God woke you up. God woke up the sun. You didn't have to lift a finger to you out of bed this morning. Amen. Praise God. God is faithful and he is good. That's your faith talking, amen. I want to welcome to the stage my spiritual son. And I've just pray. I've already prayed over, over Arvin. I've prayed over this word. And y'all are going to be blessed so, by it. Again, well, I just want to say thank you guys for being here. I believe that God has a word for you here today. And it's a word that's not just going to be just to be heard, but it's something that's going to be planted deep inside of you so that a harvest can come. I don't know about you. I just don't want to just exist. I'm ready to thrive. How about you? Amen? And God has called you to thrive. And we need some knowledge. We need some information. We need a word that's going to help us propel into that place. And, uh, and I just want to say, Pastor Kimber, thank you so much for everything that you do. I know that I'm not the man of God that I could, that I, that, that I was, or the man that I was without you in my life. And uh, it, if it wasn't for you, I don't even know where my wife and my family, my kids, where we would be. So I just say thank you so much for standing, for being a true woman of God who's searching after God's heart and running after him with full speed and everything. It is an honor to be under your, uh, under your ministry and just say thank you. Put your hands together for our senior pastor. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, we've been on a series called Monsters. Say, ooh. Okay, it, you know, it, it really, it's not like one of those monsters on TV. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I know that's fake. There's some monsters out there in this world that is after us. And the reason why it's, he's at this monster is after us is because there's purpose inside of every single one of you guys. And God has spoken over you and, and, and called you. And you may not know it, but it, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It doesn't mean that he didn't speak over you. But the enemy knows that there's something that's inside of each and every one of you. And he's going to do everything that he can to stop it. Because he is the father of lies. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy everything that God wants to do in our life. And by the, by the power and the spirit of God, we're going to not just beat it. We're going to thrive. We're going to increase. Amen? So today, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the spirit of the age. There's a certain time uh, for everything. Uh, just kind of back a little bit. My kids and I, uh, my son and I, well, my daughter too. We like to play video games. 
We'll play video games. And, you know, for anybody who plays video games, it's not just playing one level and then the game is over. You go from level to level. Now, you know, you can't get to the next level unless you beat the boss. And the boss is supposed to be a little bit difficult. In this day and age, there are spirits that have been held up for right now. I mean, just look at the look at the news. Look at what's going on in the world. Look at what what's going on with uh, with society. And there's so much lawlessness. There's so much uh, this confusion that's going on in this world. And and it says we're living in the last days. Apostle Paul talks about the society getting off track so much so that even Christians they get lost in this this mix. There's going to be a falling away of Christians who, who, who go to church. They come to church. But if their heart is not truly connected, they get swept away by the, by the lies. They get swept away by confusion. And, and we can't be swept away. We, we got a job to do. God has called us to do something. So we have to be able to be planted deep. Now, uh, 2, Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. And this is our opening scripture. And this is... Apostle Paul talking says, but mark this, there will be a terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. How many of y'all know, mm, I ain't, no, don't, don't say no names. I know that I already popped up, the head, somebody's face popped up in your, in, in your mind already. Lovers of money, hmm, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. And it's not just their parents, it's disobedient to authority. Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving. Wow. I just, uh, I mean, I don't like turning on the news, but just turning on the news, I saw all of that. Slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I'm going to say that last line one more time. Lovers of pleasure than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Wow. How can you have a, a, a level of godliness, but denying its power? So it, 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 just letting you know, the enemy's not worried about you coming to church. The enemy's worried about you hearing his word. Because if you hear his word, then that means there's power that's being transferred into you. And if he can stop that from happening, how many things is he actually affecting? It's like a ripple. It's like a, a, a rock thrown in a, in a pond. If you don't ever throw that, rip, that, that rock in the, in the pond, you will never know how many ripples are going to be sent and how many people is going to be affected. So if you can stop it right before it starts. Wow. Wow. Um, Y'all, everybody has their phone. I, love, I, I like Siri every once in a while because Siri, sometimes she doesn't understand me. So I, I have to kind of speak a little louder and clearer. But, um, but Siri, there's, there's GPS on the phone, and I'll t I, I can tell Siri, hey, I want to go here. And, and, and then she'll get me directions. Sometimes, you, you know, I've, I had issues with, like, I'm not putting them out there, Google or something, and they led me in the wrong place. But you need, you know, you need, sometimes you need direction to go to where you need to go. You know, to, get, to get where you need to go. But there's two things that you have to have to get to that place. One, you need a, where you are. You need your current location. And then you need a destination. Your current location is, is going to di dictate how far, how long it's going to take you to get where you need to be. If you don't know where you are, how can you get to where you need to go? I say that because the enemy is trying to talk to us about our identity, who you are in Christ. If you don't know who you are in Christ, how can he get you to the place where you need to be to be the man and woman of God that, you call, that he's called you to be? You have to know who you are. There's so much confusion. Culture is confusing, telling you that you should be this, you should be that. That you can't refer to me as this. You have to refer to me as this and that. And it's, it just, and it's like, it, it, it actually, it creates pride. Pride inside of us because of the fact that, well, well, well I'm this. And I was born this way. Ah, what did God say about that? What did God say about that? You got to weigh it against something. 
And, and it gets to a place where you become, uh, the, the, the world is actually intolerant. Actually, let me restate that. They're very tolerant of everything else except for being a Christian. And the moment you stand up for truth, the moment you stand up for what is right, then all of a sudden you're under attack. You're the one that's intolerant. But the truth, the, the word is the word. It's, it's, it's the truth. And it's the way. So you can't get caught up in the culture. We have to get to a place of understanding who we are. And I pray that, that God is continuing to reveal the, your, you know, who he is to you. Because the more you see him, the more you're going to understand who you are. Amen? All right. So the two things that we're going to be talking about today is going to be about pride and rebellion. Pride and rebellion. Now, they do go hand in hand. And, and I tell you, pride is one of those things that that's been around for so long. That was, that was before, you know, uh, Jezebel. That was before. And, and it's all in the root. That's all root of all those, uh, those demons and, and spirits that operate. It starts with pride. Think about it. Lucifer. Where did it start with him? A simple thought. A thought that he could get God's worship. He could get God's uh, power. He, he, he could be God. And it started with pride, and then that's where the fall came. The enemy would love to separate us when that pride hits. The whole goal of that is not just to, to, you know, to be boastful. It's to separate you. It's to separate us from the love of God. It's to separate us from those who are called to speak to us. It's to separate us from your purpose. It's to separate you from the things that God has called you to do. We can't let that separation happen. Again, it's like the, 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 the stone. If we don't throw that stone, we don't, we don't know how, long is, how far it's going to affect. I love uh, the fact that when that separation, this relationships, I told my brother, one, my brother, I, I, I met him the other night when we were in the gym. Relationships are so important. Guys, I need you to look at the neighbor next to you and tell them, I need you. I don't know. That was so much love in this place when y'all said that. Now look to the other person that, that, you felt, that felt left out and say, you need me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, relationships are vital. We can't do life alone. That's why we have the connect groups. We want you to be connected. We want, there's a relationships that are formed, not just to have fellowship, but it's an opportunity for us to get to know each other instead of that, hey, how you doing? Goodbye. And it's that very shallow thing. We got to have deep relationships, and we have to get close to each other. And the enemy would love to separate those relationships. Um, and that's one thing I love about my pastor, Pastor Kimber. The relationship that you have with your leadership, not just with your leadership, with the people here, you are real. I love watching. If y'all, did y'all notice her when she was walking around during a celebration, how she walked around and she hugged everybody? And if she didn't get to hug you, I promise you, you come back next week, she'll be here. She's going to hug you first. And that's just the way it is because of the fact that you are important. And that relationship is important. We have to have somebody that's willing to stand and, and love on us when we know we're not lovable. When I couldn't even love myself. And, and the moment that the enemy severs that relationship, Pastor Kimber, I've been a part of your ministry for over 20 years. And had that happened, I don't know where, I, I definitely wouldn't be on stage. I, don't, I know I wouldn't be here. I know my children wouldn't be serving. I know that my wife would not be, we would probably not be together. And it's because of the fact that we have a relationship and, and, and being, being able to, to hear when God works and speaks through you and, then you, and we're able to process that. We're able to, to, to utilize that and grow. And, and that's where relationships starts to happen. It's not just the shallow things. It's deep. It's so important. And the enemy would love to do that, to separate us from, from what the possibilities are. Um, Adam and Eve. Y'all know the story. You know, it, it, Adam and Eve, Eve was, uh, was by herself. She was by herself. Adam was doing what he was supposed to be doing, his work. But... He should have been covering as well. And what happened to, Ad, uh, to Eve at that time? A serpent came in. Slippery little thing. Slithery little snake. Coming in this place. And he, I mean, he came into paradise. God had positioned Eve in paradise. Brought, put her exactly where she needed to be. And the snake came in and caused confusion. 
and, and, and God had already told her what she was supposed to do. So she had, she was positioned properly. She had purpose. But then the enemy spoke, and it caused doubt. Started to make her feel like, well, you know, t- told her, did God really say? Questioning. It was just God. Can you imagine walking in, in the garden, walking with God, and, and it's just you and him? How come, what happened? Why did she not, uh, hearing the snake talk, okay, uh, that's kind of crazy hearing a snake talk. But then hearing what was, was being said, why didn't she turn around and talk to God? Saying, God, did you hear what this thing was just saying? Why didn't she do that? That relation, for some odd reasons, like she got caught up in that relationship and speaking to the snake. And that snake started to make her feel less than who she was. And then, and, and start talking to her pride. Well, no, God didn't say that you, did he really say that you're going to die? You ain't going to die. No, you're going to be like God. And then it's, she started to think about pride. It's like, oh, really? I can be like God. Rebell- pride and rebellion always comes before the fall. And it, and it starts it starts with us. We have to be able to catch that. We have, we're living in a generation that we're, that's really focused on I, focused on me. You know, Instagram. <laughs> it's everything. Uh, every, most pictures are about themselves. They don't, they don't show pictures about where they went or, you know, or different things. It's all about me, 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 me. Selfies. Selfie generation. It's all about making yourself feel good. We live in a time where, uh, you know, if it's, it feels good to you, it must be right. Is that truth? What does the word say? What does God say about it? you got to have something to stand on. James 1, 23, 25. This is in the NIV version. It says James 1, 23, 25. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at their face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. Really? Wow. But whoever intent, uh, intently or looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, say gives freedom, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Not forgetting. The word, again, this, the word, when you, when you hear the word, it's not just coming and being in a place. It's doing what you heard. It's applying what you heard. And it says, uh, verse 26, those who consider themselves religious yet do not keep the tight rein on their tongue, deceiving, deceive themselves in their religious worth. Father, we never want to downplay the grace and mercy that he's given us. We never want to water it down. Religion that God our Father accepts is pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows. That's looking after each other, guys. Looking after uh, uh, people in distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. God has called us to be selfless, not selfish. Humble, not haughty. Amen? So, guys, I want to give you three things. Three things. It says how to recognize the spirit of the age because, you know, it will creep in. I, I, I don't like this. I, I don't like the Y'all ever seen, seen the, the check engine light in your car? It bothers me. It really bothers me. Some people say, like, oh, well, I know what it is. Uh, it doesn't bother me to keep it on. But the check engine in your light is, uh, uh, on, on the dash is supposed to communicate when something is wrong. Okay? There's codes in your check engine light. So you, it just doesn't tell you, well, your engine is wrong. You actually have to decipher the code, get somebody to read the code, and tell you exactly how to, to get it to work out. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do, I'm going to give you three things. Three things to make sure that you do a diagnostic uh, uh, of your spirit, of, uh, of your uh, the spiritual uh, spiritual diagnostic. I did that. So the first thing is when uh, it says, how do you recognize the spirit of the age? The first thing is when you walk in in disobedience. Say it again. So when you walk in disobedience, ignoring direction. God's word is clear. If it's not clear, and sometimes it's not because of our, our, of our understanding, it's not because of God. God is very clear. It's because of our understanding. Then ask. Ask a question. That's why we have our, our overseers. That's why we have um, people that, are, uh, you know, that we can turn to. That's why we have those relationships. But the moment that we start ignoring the word and we become selfish, 
We become, we start doing, it's, just, it's a natural thing. We are natural, selfish creatures. That's just who we, that's how we were created. Uh, that's not how we were created. That's just how we operate. But it's, I thank God for the blood that, uh, that redeems us and sets us free and, and makes, a, our, makes us new every day. And, and I want to talk about the real quick uh, uh, about my son, David Houston. My bad. Uh, <laughs> he's already wiping his head. Now, for those who have kids, you ever tell your kids to do something? I need you to wash the, uh, you know, wash the dishes. It says, okay, I'm wa- I'll wash the dishes. He goes in there, and he starts washing, and he starts putting in a dishwasher. Well, there's a certain thing that you have to do. Well, and, and I, I walk up in him just to follow and just make sure that everything is done, hold him accountable, everything is good. And says, well, son, what is this over here on the stove? And he's like, uh, I didn't. Well, I thought I did everything. Uh, you told me to do the dishes, and I did whatever's in the sink. Well, there's stuff on the stove. There's things that you should, you know, to be able to see. And it's like, well, Dad, I did the dishes. Yes, you did, but you didn't do the job completely. You know, partial obedience is not obedience. That's still disobedience. God, when we, you, you have to follow uh, you know, the word. You have to do everything that God has called you to do and, and, and make sure you, you, you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, 1 Samuel 15, 22, 24. I want to talk about uh, real quick is when Samuel was speaking to Saul. Saul is king at this time. And God had given a word to Samuel, uh, God, uh, to Samuel to share to, to Saul. And this is Samuel replies, says, has the Lord as much pleasure in your burnt offerings and sacrifices as in your obedience? That's a question. Obedience is far better than sacrifice. He is much more interested in your listening to him than your offering of the fat of the rams to him. For rebellion is as bad as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as bad as worshiping idols. Wow. Rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. And now because you have rejected the word of Jehovah, he has rejected you from being king. And then Saul says, I have sinned. Saul finally admitted, yes, I have disobeyed your instructions and commands of the Lord, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. Wow. Getting caught up in, exactly, pleasing people. There's no reason for us to be afraid. When God has called and uh, and spoke to you, there, and, and gave you a, a charge, there's no other reason why you shouldn't do it. There's no reason why you should be able to be, to, to be afraid of people because if God called you to do it, you do it. You do it with everything that's inside of you. You don't have to wait for people's approval. Saul was ordered by God uh, through the prophet Samuel to destroy everything that the Amalekites touched. He, their children, or their, 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 every, every single person, all the livestock, everything, wiped them completely out because of what had happened previously to is, uh, Israel, what, it, what they did to Israel. But Saul, he, was, he did something that, w- that God didn't tell him to do, and that was to save a- uh, Agag. And then uh, at the same time, he's like, oh, well, this is the king. This is his best, uh, his, his, uh, you know, his animals, his livestock. He's like, oh, I'm going to keep those too. And he kept it for himself. The little things, the little things that we try to, to that, that gives us that, um, uh, that proudness. Hey, I'm something now. I'm that little, uh, I got a little something now, that selfish ambition. We can't have that. It's all good. If that's God, tell him, uh, yeah, let him speak. But if it's not, put him on hold. Hallelujah. God has called us, called you called you to fight, then that means you need to fight. Called you to stand. Then that means you need to stand. Husbands, if uh, God has called you to be the priest in your home, that means you have to be the priest in your home. And, and so it's like when you have to understand who you are and understand the call that's on you, because if you don't do it, who will? Who will? So the first thing, so how do we, how do we know how, uh, how to recognize the, the spirit of the age? The first thing is when we walk in disobedience, okay? Number two, when you believe, this is, the, I guess, the third symptom of spirit of the age, when you believe you know more than God, Lord help us. 
But you know how e- it's, it's one of those things. It's not like you, you, you're being so full of the word. It's really, it's like you want to try to help God out. You want to do, you know, it's like, God, this, you know my plans. You know what, and this is, you know, you, you gave me these ideas, and, and now it's not happening the way that, you know, that, that you gave it to me. So I'm going to go ahead and make it happen, you know, the way that I think it should happen. Believing that you know more than God. It's like you're taking control out of God's hands, and, and all we do, and all we end up doing is getting in the way. We slow down that process because God wants his best for you. He's, he's going to make it happen, but you've got to let him work. Um, Hebrews 4.15. It says, uh, this is in the living, uh, the living Bible. The high priest of ours, understanding our weaknesses, since he had the same temptations, let's talk about Jesus, we do, though he never once gave way to them in sin. So let us come boldly to the very throne, uh, throne of God and stay there to receive his mercy and to find grace to help us in our time of need. We try to get, in a, we get, end up getting in a way when we uh, feel that God doesn't understand. He doesn't know what we're going through. He doesn't understand the struggles of, you know, of the job. He doesn't understand the struggles in our family. Yeah, you know, you know, he just, he's up there. Like he's the man upstairs. I, you know, I, forgive me, I, I said that a long time ago. But he's not upstairs, he's right here. And Jesus suffered everything. Say everything. He suffered everything, just like you did, so that he can tell you there is a way. There is truth, and there is life. Hallelujah. If we don't know who to turn to in our weaknesses, you open yourself to the lies of the devil. I'm going to say it one more time. If you don't know who to turn to in, our, in your weaknesses, you open yourself to the lies of the devil. When you, there's been times when you, you get hurt, and the, if you don't know you need to go to the doctor, you'll end up just keep on going, and you end up making it worse, making it uh, uh, to a point where you are just disabled. And you got to have somebody that can speak to your life and says, look, you need to go to the doctor. Somebody that can tell you the truth. I know you're a strong person, but you need help. I know that you got this, in, but you need to do this to get better. You have to have somebody that can speak into your life. Hallelujah. And uh, we talked a little bit about already uh, Eve, and, and I want to go back to Gen- Genesis 3, and this is verse 4. And this is when the serpent was talking to Eve, and he says, You will cert- not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from, from it, your eyes will be open." And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable to gain wisdom, she took some and ate. I want to go back. That was just, she said that the, the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye. Wow. God already had told her, don't eat from that tree. But because of the fact that it, it pleased her eye, not everything that's gold, uh, everything that glitters is gold. And wow, it's like how amazing how the enemy will trick you. It may look right. It may look like it's supposed, you know, that it's supposed to be, but it is a lie. And it says also desirable to gain wisdom. It says uh, she, uh, go, keep on going. She says she also gave, uh, she took some and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. What happens to you is not just what's going to happen to you. It's going to affect somebody else. Amen? What happened to her when she ate, she gave it to, to Adam. And we need to make sure that what we're eating, what we're consuming, what God is putting inside of us is the right thing. Because it's going to affect our kids. It's going to affect our family. You know, for me, I, 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 I like working out, you know, uh, for those who don't know. Um, I, I do like exercising. And I, you got to be cognitive of what you're putting in your body. And it's not just for, you know, the, your physical aspect. It's because I want to be around for my kids as long as possible. And, and if I don't take care of myself and start thinking about that, then where are my kids going to be when, when, I, when I get older? 
It's like you start, there's certain things, there's a time and place where you can eat whatever you want. But you have to start getting to a place where, hey, it's, this is something that you need to be cognitive of, what you're consuming. And, and so you have to start remembering, uh, start thinking about that. Remember what God did for you. God delivered you. Sis, I can't tell you when you, f- I remember when you first walked in here. When you first walked in here, you, the, just the heaviness that was on you. When you were walking in with your cane. And I, and I led you through that door and I and led you to sit down uh, to your seat. But then to see where you are now, how you can put that, that hand, that hand right there, how you can praise God with that arm. Hallelujah. You got to remember where you were, not just revel in it, but you got to make sure that you, you don't forget where he brought you from because that's what you're going to stand on. When you get, when times get hard, that's what you stand on, knowing that God delivered you, that God brought you to this place. God is bringing you to level, to glory, to glory. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy would love to, again, separate you and help you forget what God is, how good God is, help you to forget what he's brought you from. I love the fact, again, Pastor Kimber, I'm, I'm going to keep pointing back at you. We have an awesome woman of God in this house, an overseer, and she's not one that's going to run when it gets hard. She's not going to run when, you, when we fall. She's not going to run and just say, you know what, they're just, that, that's it, I'm done with them. As a shepherd, she stands. She stands when it's, when it's time to fight, she stands. She's not hired help because the hired help does what? They run. It's like, I'm not, I don't get paid enough to do this. You know, that's, that's past my pay grade, so, and, and they're, they're gone. But a real shepherd stands in the mist and will stand and fight. And Pastor Kimber, she fights. She fights. She, she's, she, I've seen her fight, uh, fight hell in high heels. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You want to be around people that are not afraid to fight, not afraid to, to get bloodied up. And, and you got to know that you're in a great place. This is a safe place. This is a place to be empowered and equipped. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting close, guys. Almost done. Almost done. Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 17, 8. It says, he is like a tree planted along a riverbank with its roots reaching deep into the water. A tree not bothered by the heat nor worried by long months of drought. It leaves, uh, its leaves stay green and it grows right on producing uh, all its l- luscious fruit. Get connected. It's not enough just to be in the place. You got to get planted. We went to the park of the other day, and we were they, they were showing uh, like the trees. we you know walking through uh, Black Bayou, and there was this one tree, huge tree, but it was knocked down. And looking at the bottom of its roots, it spread this way sideways, and so it covered. When it fell, a lot of it had come up, but the roots didn't go down. It didn't go deep. When you're here, it's not. Don't just take a seat. I'm pro- I, I, I thank God that you're here. Now, if this for our guests, this doesn't apply to you, but we definitely want you to be connected. But you got to get the, the the roots deep. Put your hands to the plow. Get involved. Get in, you know build relationships. There's something that God has given you a gift to do, and only you can do it. So use those gifts. Get involved and do something for the kingdom. Amen. And, and when they, and if you hear somebody telling you, hey, you know, they're not using your gift over there, come over here. You know, come, come, come hang out over here. You know, we can, we can, we, we can use your gift over here. We, we can put you on stage. We can, we, 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 we can shine that light on you and stroke your ego. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe that. Look at your neighbor and say, don't believe the hype. Because I promise you, they just want your gift for themselves. They don't want your gift so that you can flourish, so that you can, so that doors can open for you. They want your gift so that they can look good. Be wise. Have those relationships, long, uh, long lasting relationships, deep relationships. Amen? All right. So, just going to review. So, the first thing, how do you know how to recognize the spirit of the age? The first thing is when we walk in disobedience. The second thing is, when you believe you know more than God, 
The last thing, guys, and this is the, uh, so important. The last thing is when you know when you are how to recognize the spirit of the ages, when you lose your first love, your first love. Gentlemen, y'all know when we were courting, when we, saw, when we saw her for the first time, you put your best on. You share your, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to put that good smelling cologne. You're going to make sure that you, you know, you got good clean clothes. Yeah, there's levels of clean, but uh, for, for, for that special one, you put on your clean, the real clean clothes, okay? And you, and you, and you give your best. Because, you know, they, you, they deserve your best. Um, and you did things for them. Little things, like opening the door, you know, and, and, and just uh, complimenting them. Where did we go where we, can't, where we forgot how to do that? It's like, you know, and, and, and I'm just as guilty. You get to a place where you get, become comfortable. It's like, you know, well, she can open her own door. Uh, you know, uh, uh, or, you know it, it's... We we forget how to give compliments. We forget how to that how important is, uh, how important they were. We lose forget the value. Those relationships are, are are so important. Our first love we can't forget our first love. God, he he's he's, what did he do? What did he do for you? What did he give for you? What did he sacrifice for you? The moment we start forgetting, oh well, I'm just at church. No. He gave his best and for, so that the church could be here now. He gave you the best, his, uh, the best of himself. Um, I want to go to Revelations 2, 1, verse, uh, and this is going to go through 6. And guys, I'm, I'm getting real close, real close. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, hallelujah, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds your hard work, and your perseverance. God knows. He knows your sacrifice. He knows some of you have walked into this place hurting. He knows that you know, uh, he knows that you want to, that your flesh does not want to be here, but you sacrifice to be here, that, you, that you're sacrificing for your family. He knows. He knows. And I know that you cannot tolerate, wait, I'm glad, yeah, tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. The good news, guys, is there's there's always a way back. God always leaves an open door. He leaves a way no matter how far we run, no matter how much we forget. And how the mistakes that we make, he says, repent and do the things you did at first. Just go back. That's simple. Do you remember the first time you get, when you, when you gave your life to Christ? The joy, the hope that's inside of you when you first give your life to Christ. Where did that go? Where did that go? We forget our first love. We forget what he's done for us. We got to get back to that. We got to get, we got to start loving on him. Amen. And the way that we start loving on him is is, is worship, real worship, real, authentic worship. Not just give, not with, not just with your mouth, with your heart, not just with your heart, with your tithe. I mean, that guys, there's, there's two things that are holy, the blood of Jesus and the tithe. Did y'all know that tithe is worship? When you give, you're honoring God. And you're saying, God, you're my, you're, you're, you're my resource. You're my provider. The job is just a job. That's just, uh, that is the, the flow. But you are my real resource. When you, when you tithe, when you give, you're letting him know you are the first in my heart. We got to prioritize some things. And, and, and not let the enemy tell you, well, you need this to make you look good. You need this because you know what, uh, you, know, you know how bills are. It, is, uh, you know, if you, you don't pay your bills, then, then, you know, then, then what's going to happen? You already know they're going to they're gonna take it back. But you've got to put God first. 
Because if you put God first, he's going to provide a resource. He's going to provide a way. He's going to give you knowledge how not to get into that situation. He's going to give you the wisdom so that you can increase, so that there's a flow and that there's no more lack. He can, he, that's what, and he's going to rebuke the locusts for you. That's what the word says when you put him first. But you have to make that decision to put him first. Amen. All right, so we're done. I just, but I just want to make sure it's driven home. How do we know and recognize the spirit of the age? First, we walk in disobedience. Second, when you believe you know more than God. And third, is when you lose your first love. We got to get back to it. We got to walk in obedience. We got to know that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. And, and we, you got to trust him. Trust him. Let him work. And then we got to get back to loving him. Loving him, worshiping him, and, 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 and put him first. Amen? I want everybody to stand. Hallelujah. God is good, good, good. Pride and rebellion causes us to carry burdens that we were never meant to carry. Pride and rebellion, uh, re rebelliousness, we start having things, holding things in, in, that weigh us down. When all God wants is just you. Go ahead and play, play us some music, guys. Jesus wants you to, to be fruitful, multiply. He wants you to, to, to walk into his best. He wants the best for you. He wants uh, so much for you. And he gave his best for us. It's hard to, to, to walk and believe that something can happen, that, uh, uh, that doors can open for you. When you don't know... Why? Jesus came so that he can be the answer for you, so that he can pay for your sins, so that he can set you free, so that you can walk into those blessings. I love the fact that God, again, he leaves that door open. He leaves us a way. He leaves us a way so that we can always come back to him to repent. If you have fallen in pride and recognize Wow, I did that. That was me. And you started operating in rebellion. Wow, I did. I did say that. All you have to do is repent. Repent is turning around and going the opposite direction. Stop right where you are and submit to the will of God. Submit to his call and turn. That's all it is. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read one more thing. This is Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, this is the opportunity. This is the time where we have to put him first. And, and, and you got to accept him. you got to open up your heart to him. Lay down, your wall, lay down the walls. Lay down your cares. Put it all before him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want every eye closed. Every eye closed. Nobody looking around. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to walk into that fullness and the great the, the, the great things that he has for you. I want you to just raise your hand. There's no shame. If you don't know him, you've never accepted him into your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Those who are online, if that's you, comment in uh, comment. And, uh, we just want to know that you're making a declaration right now, that you're going to, 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 to give your life to him. You're going to be a vessel for him. You want to do his will, and you want the best in your life, and let him give it to you. I want everybody, put your hand over your heart, and we're going to, I want you to repeat after me. Father, I have sinned. I have fallen short of your glory. I have made mistakes, and I've made some, <laughs> some, some good things too, but I give them all to you. 
I open my heart up and I ask you to come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Take control and use me for your will. I believe when you died, you died for me. And when you rose, I rose with you. Thank you, Jesus, for making me new. Come into my heart and be my Lord every day. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. For those who are online, we just want to say again, thank you. If, you, if that was you, make sure you comment. Uh, and make sure you stay tuned. We got, uh, Pastor Kimber has an amazing word for next week in the continuation of Monsters.